The video you're about to see first aired on our Bears YouTube channel as Harrison Graham sat, sat down with The Athletic and Yahoo Sports' Nate Tice talk mostly quarterbacks, some wide receivers as well. Obviously a little bit more Bears-centric, but a ton of good NFL conversation, so we had to make sure it got up here. Hope you've enjoyed all of our NFL Combine coverage so far. A lot more still to come. Hit that sub button right now. Here we go as we are at the NFL Combine, continuing our coverage here on Chicago Bears Now. Harrison Graham with you. we got Nate Tice of The Athletic. He does a couple podcasts there, including podcasts of the pros with Dane Brugler. You're writing for Yahoo Sports. You're all over the place oh. these days. How's it been so far at the Combine? Uh, before we jump into what everybody wants to talk about, is quarterback situation number one. Yeah, uh, it was my night. My week's going with it ended at ten o'clock last night, which <laughs> is very very nice. So that's how my week's going. I put myself to bed in a very nice tidy stuff. Put bed on. Took a late shower. It was really nice. I rejuvenated myself. So I'm doing much better than maybe yesterday because this is a long long week in Indianapolis. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go that route tonight yeah. before the quarterbacks because. The Brock Bauer scrum was pretty hectic. I think this Caleb Williams thing, which is a great transition for the Bears here, I don't know, could be the biggest scrum in the history of the Combine. Oh, really? I, 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 it seems that way. I mean, it's. I think it's going to be wild tomorrow uh, here in Indianapolis. Yeah, it's, it's how it goes. We got, we got some – it's nice for the draft when you have the bona fide positions and even the fantasy guys can get involved with this too because you got quarterbacks, you got receivers at the top. You even have offensive tackles, so it's kind of nice to have actually like star power at the top of the draft, and I think yeah. deserving star power, too. Yeah, I mean, you see mock drafts where sometimes the top ten picks are all offense. So and Every time I try to sprinkle on one defensive guy, because I, <laughs> I think I did one. With Someone's got to go here. I think I did 11 offensive guys my first mock I did. I go, this actually might be realistic, people. I might go 14. Now, there could be a scenario for the Bears at nine to go defense. We'll get to that in a minute. You're the president of the Drake May Fan club, I would say. Yeah. I, there's some other. I know at one point Dane had May higher than Williams. He's yeah. kind of gone back on that a little bit. Why Drake May over Caleb Williams? Yeah, it, and again, I love Caleb too. So I do want to always get that out front. Sure, it's sure. a 1A, 1B situation for me. But with May, he has a lot of the stuff that I look to a, a modern quarterback play uh, as far as size, speed. I think obviously he's actually gotten underrated as an athlete. So far, yeah. I think he's gonna. He's one of the best scramblers in college football statistically, and just watching him on film, what he decides to do on third down. Again, I can mention the size. He does certain things that I see the best guys, the best quarterbacks, the elite guys do right now in modern football, attacking over the middle of the field, launching stuff down the field. When other teams try to heat him up, defenses try to blitz him, he gashes them. He pushes the ball constantly, and then sometimes when stuff breaks, he can, if stuff breaks down, he can create a little bit. And so that size, speed, creativity, also just that brutal aggressiveness, yeah. that ruthless aggression, I believe John Cena said back in the day on SmackDown. <laughs> uh, but that, I think that is exactly what I like about him. He has that kind of total package that I really look at in the quarterback position. Do you like the Justin Herbert comps? I, I have been struggling to find a comparison for him because, there. yes, I understand the number 10, the, uh, the size, some yeah. of the speed stuff and pushing the ball, but it's not one-to-one -to, -one to me. I've seen some... Me, it was like Justin Herbert with a lobotomy. Or okay. like, yeah, or, and I've seen the Justin Herbert with a little bit of Josh Allen. He seems Allen a little more athletic than Herbert. He is. He's, he, he's going to test better. Yeah. Yes. And, and Herbert's a little bigger, maybe like 5, 10 pounds bigger, but not crazy much and a little taller. But, um, but there is some comparisons as far as just the arm talent. Uh, I think Herbert has maybe a little stronger arm, but that ability to push the ball. But, yeah, I, that, if I had to compare one, that would be one. But it's not a perfect one-to-one -to, -one to me. I've heard, like – a Herbert Burrow hybrid. I don't know if you've said that where it's like Herbert's fastball is clearly more than May's, like on those intermediate balls, but he almost has a better touch is than Herbert does yep. as a thrower, which is kind of the Burrow just him to layer those footballs in there. That's actually a, actually a good one. That was not me, but I might steal that one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, but tip it, jars over here. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that, little <laughs> that little touch, though, is exactly that layering over the middle against zone. Um, against guys where they have to go over the linebacker while also creating yards after catch opportunities. So that is a good one because, yeah, like you said, he doesn't, Herbert has almost a rare arm as far as arm strength or excellent arm, I would say. While I think Mays on the scouting scale is very good and Burroughs is more above average. So right. I think that middle ground is actually kind of a good comparison. Let's talk about Kale Williams now. A lot yep. of chatter increasing there. Um, reportedly met with the Bears last night, as yep. probably several other teams as well. Um, why do you think, even though you like May a little bit more, 
he would be a good fit in Chicago, and do you think he would mesh well with Shane Waldron's offense? I do. Uh, <coughs> Caleb, and I think this has gotten underrated with him, is his ability to win from the pocket is, is very good. He is, I, have, I think, excellent accuracy. Um, I ended up comparing him after I wrote Caleb Williams and dove into him. I was watching him during the season, mostly TV copies, until I can get my hands on film a month or two later. And I'm, you know, get down on him a little bit, but I was like, I'm not totally down. I'm so glad I never had a hot take about it because then I watch him on All-22. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're a baller. Yeah. Uh, a lot of his creation and getting, I know the Mahomes comparisons everything like that, I end up comparing him to Drew Brees coming out of Purdue okay. uh, because of that accuracy. The size is almost exactly the same as Brees. 6'1", 214 Brees was, uh, com- or 213 coming out of college. Yep. Williams was listed 215, give or take, you know, those couple pounds. I yep. think the same height. I think just that throwing ability, that accuracy, consistent accuracy with some creation. Breeze is a much better athlete than people remember. Um, so, like, I, I think that's what it is. is his ability to operate on time. He has clean footwork. Then he can do the creation stuff that gets the highlights. But his down-to-down stuff is very real. And why he has to do the creation was because the offensive line was losing or two guys were running the same route. And that's why he had to do it. So, I, I think he's just a great uh, operator of the offense and can do with the creation stuff. Yeah, I think looking back, and you've seen more of this like kind of emerge publicly just with people breaking down the film, is I don't know if we've ever seen an offense collapse just from an X and O standpoint like we did with Lincoln Riley's offense this year. For a guy who's one of the most renowned offensive guys in college football, yeah. I, I'm, I know, I'm sure a lot of it was personnel-based, but it was just unreal how it much was. it fell apart, and Caleb just – knowing the defense was a disaster too, I think felt like he had to save the day on not yes. every game, every play, yes. which I think led to some bad habits. It did. And, it, and I could see him trying to win from the pocket and prove like, hey, I'm not just this creator and all this stuff. Like, I'm not just this ad lib guy. And he couldn't. Like, it was just a like guard yeah. losing or some botch protection or some – you know, like uh, tackle uh, just doesn't block anyone. Yeah, guard <laughs> guard just goes ole, and you know, or you got a tight end and a receiver both running a flat route at the same time, where they're next to each other. And it's like, of course, he has to come off that. Yeah. Um, I went. I'm, I'm totally with you. I went from Lincoln Riley is one of the most the greatest innovators that we've seen in recent memory. Uh, one of these guys that's doing so much stuff to just falling off a freaking cliff. Where I watch this offense and going, what are you guys doing? <laughs> what is that? And. Apparently, it wasn't enough to make the commanders not, uh, take Cliff Kingsbury, uh, <laughs> yeah. who was a part yeah. of that offense. And I don't know if that, he had what his influence That's on That's going to be interesting, yeah. Yeah, but the going from – it shows how important offensive line is because that's a Lincoln Riley's secret sauce at Oklahoma is having some dudes up front, and that helps you do all the kind of other stuff down the field. But he didn't really have that in L.A. I want to talk number nine pick scenarios in just a second, but real quick on Jaden Daniels. To me, like my order – and. I'm no expert. Williams, May, decent gap Daniels, next chunk of three. That's kind of how I layer it. Can Daniels get into that conversation? I personally don't see it because for your reason with May, he doesn't throw over the middle. At all. At all. At all. I saw a breakdown today where it's like it's under 9%, I think. Yeah. Might have been mine. (laughs) <laughs> I wrote about him, so it, it, that's and that's that's it. Uh, he, it's the only quarterback that's been drafted in the top two rounds since 2020, uh, the only quarterback that threw over the middle less than Jane Daniels was Justin Fields, and and that's been an issue. The Bears, and you're going to make a change. Yes, and why would I draft a guy that's 30 pounds lighter than Justin Fields, who has the ex- and they're basically the same age. They're not yeah. that much of the age difference. Who's had so many starts. Why would I do that when he has the same negatives that really I don't see a lot of quarterbacks yeah. overcoming it. It only gets harder to yeah. operate over the middle. So if that's not part of your game, I, I'm with you. It's May Williams, and I think they're clear, clear, elite-type talents. I have a, a pretty, a, a, maybe a larger gap, and then it's Daniels, and actually McCarthy's grown on me as I watch more and more Seems of him. Seems to be a lot of upward it's, there. We, it, trust me, if you told me that a month ago that I'd have Daniels and McCarthy near each other, I'd be like, no way. But now that they've kind of squeezed a little bit, they also have size concerns. To me, yeah. under 205 is a huge thing for me. I've done some studies on this, but under 205, there's not a lot of success there. So, yeah. so girth is a big thing for these two, and that's also why I have them a clear, clear tier, maybe tier and a half. Below. The, the Daniels thing is just like, sure, if he could throw slot fades every play, he'd be awesome. Yeah, if you have two, all, like, two <laughs> yeah. first round and, receivers, yeah, and, 15, and, yeah, yeah. and a decent old line, actually a yeah. good, good offensive system and everything. Yeah, that's it. It's he took the easy answer. He's throwing over the top. I just don't see that anticipation working, like those layer throws. I like to see the other guys. Real quick, number nine pick. Obviously, I think every Bears fan's dream, regardless of the quarterback stuff aside, is if neighbors are a Dunze Falls. I'm not sure how possible that feels at this point. I don't know how you feel about that. And then 
give me your thoughts on the receivers, and then I got a hypothetical okay. for number nine, depending on how things could fall. No, I, I think this is a great receiver class. Uh, obviously, Harrison Jr., who yeah. will go, I should go one. I can't believe people are saying Neighbors is close to him. I, I, but having said that, I think Neighbors and Dunze are easy dogs. top ten graded guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're awesome. And two different flavors, which I really like, which is really cool to see, because you see some eye of the beholder stuff with that. I think those three are – I'm a tough receiver grader. I, I always think receivers are the cherry on top, not the thing you want to build around. Those yeah. three to me are legit top ten type talents that are like you can be the alpha of your passing game. And then there's some other guys like Brian Thomas, uh, AD, um, AD Mitchell from Texas yeah. has really grown on me. Troy Franklin I think is interesting as like a second round guy. And there's other types uh, on top of that, Lad McConkley. So it's a, it's a awesome receiver class. Uh, I think Dane, who you guys just had on, who I do the show with. He had, I think he has 18 receivers in his top 100. Wow. It, it's, it's a loaded Seems loaded like it's receiver. more and more every year. I oh know last gosh. year was a bit of a down year that at the different. top at least. But. Yeah, and that, that, it was different flavor. Like last year was a whole bunch of kind of mighty mites, and then right. this year it's actually some like X's and real size that can win on the outside. Would you trade up if you were the Bears to get one of those three? I've, I'm hearing that kind of being more and more. I wouldn't, but yeah. I understand it. Um, and again, it's a loaded receiver class, so it's like, all right, what if I get a guy that maybe has a tier below or half tier below and get, you know, don't reach or anything like that? They might actually, one of those guys still might fall. You might have three quarterbacks, you might have some tackles, somebody might reach on a defensive guy who might be a tier below. So, you know, it still might be there. So, I don't know about the, the trade up, but I understand some of the argument. So, hypothetical at nine, three receivers are gone. Only three quarterbacks have gone at this point. The big three, we'll, we'll say Daniels is that number three guy. Bowers is gone too. Oh, okay. Because my that. like fallback is like, oh, just uh, take that, Bowers. That's, <laughs> I, I thought I was like, oh, I already got Let's an easy answer. Jim here. Harbaugh, We're done. Harbaugh takes him. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Do you go tackle? I think trading down is certainly something you very yeah. much entertain. Obviously, edge is an option as well. Um, where would you lean at that point? Let's say trades off the table. Tackle or edge? Where would you go in that direction? I I would prefer tackle just because I I, I think the the upper tier of this tackle class is better than the upper tier of the edge class. Yeah. Um, Dallas Turner uh, from Alabama is my edge one, but it's almost by default. Uh, I consider him more of a back half of the first round type of guy, but he might go edge one. Yeah. Um, so like that's that's like a little rich. I almost want to go tackle. I really like the tackles that the Bears have. I like Braxton Jones, and I, I really yeah. like Darnell Wright. Right. But uh, are you going to bump one of those? Rob Pierre to pay Paul. Um, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on his right now. Uh, Washington uh, offense tackle. Oh, uh, Fotnu. Fotnu. There's Fashanu, Fatnu, yeah. Fawaga. It's so so many vowels that start with F. Um, Fatnu, who's a left tackle at Washington, I wouldn't mind him stick like trying that right tackle, but I think also he, a lot of people have a guard. Yeah. And I think he's a top twenty type talent. Right. Having said that, some of that versatility helps. But that's a guy that, oh, if we can trade back three, four spots and get him, I actually think that's a nice consolation prize. Yeah, I think in my hypothetical, ideally, you just trade back. I, and, right. And you get more. Because I think the Bears would like more picks anyway because, look, you're, you have two in the top ten, but then you don't pick till 75. Now, ideally, if you trade Justin Fields, you get a second-round pick or something like that. But, yeah, it'll be fascinating. I think the dream is if a receiver falls yeah. there. But you also know Ryan Poles, like, if he loves one of these tackles and he's like, I'd pair this guy with Darnell Wright for the next decade, well, like – and we'll just get we our best you, five Bra out there. Yeah. We love you, Braxton. We'll, we'll figure out another yeah. spot, or maybe you trade him for like a third round pick. Or Who hope knows? Hope you like guard and like yeah, yeah. You know, like maybe works at guard. But no, that, uh, that's how it. Offensive line, man, it's so hard. I know Bears fans know this more than anyone. It, it's so guys, hard to man. find guys, and if you got a chance to get a blue chip guy, you take it. It's a it's a premium spot, and it's really hard. You you can't ever acquire these guys. They rarely hit free agency. You rarely are open for a trade. You know, there's barely any Trent Williams or Teron Armsteads of the world that, that happen like that. It's just not – you have to draft these guys, and you have to draft these guys high. Look at all the all-pro offensive linemen. It's usually first rounder, first rounder, first rounder. Yeah. You, have to, you have to invest. Darnell Wright's working out, so maybe get another one in there. All right, we'll end with this. You're running the Bears. What is the dream scenario for this draft? Oh, my God. Dream would be bait Washington moving up one spot. Okay. Getting a little bit more there, taking the other guy, because uh, I do think Caleb and May are near each other enough. And I know, that, again, this is a dream thing. Get those picks, and you get the other guy, trade, move on from fields and all that. And so when you, like, when you say the other, whoever, whoever Washington, whoever Washington does not take. You would think they would take Caleb with right, a close with, connection. Yes, exactly. Either you, way. You okay. never know. You never gotcha. know. I know. Be interesting. Yeah. He's Nate Tice. You can follow him on Twitter, X, whatever we're calling it these days, at Nate underscore Tice. He's writing for Yahoo Sports, a couple of podcasts on The Athletic. Go check him out. Doing an awesome job. We'll see where he ends up with the Drake May stuff over uh, the next couple of months.